dragging off grid, I'm going to quickly show you how I test these K2 Energy Lithium batteries for their capacity. So you see this one has been tested and I wrote on 6303, that's, so that's 6300 milliamp hours or 6 amp hours. This is a 24 volt battery, K2B24V10EB, and I'm using a iCharger 3010B. So what the 3010B is, is it can charge, discharge, and balance a, a lithium battery with up to 10 cells in series. That's what the 10 stands for. It's a $200 charger. And you can also connect it to a computer, which I'll show you, you actually need to connect it to a computer. And it has a readout, so this tells you right now, I just tested this battery again, and it tested at 6195. So it's 100 milliamp hours less, so either it got used a little bit, or maybe sometimes with that closer reading, maybe one of the tests was done in cold temperature, one test was done in hot temperature or something. So anyway, this charger has different settings. Um, you go to lithium, you make sure it's on lithium iron phosphate, so that's L-I-F-E. You have certain settings built into the charger, but uh, in general, usually default settings are okay. So I want to move over to, first you will need to regular charge it. This battery's been discharged. Sometimes I charge them at 1 amp, but uh, 1.5 is adequate. You don't want to charge it too fast because you want to make sure it pushes all the juice it can and gets you a full battery. So 1.5 amps. And this is 8S battery. It's 24 volts. So that's 8 lithiums in series. You hold this. It starts. Charges it up. So that's one and a half amp hours. And these are rated at, I mean, not 9.6. So if they're good, they're, you know, these are used. So the good ones are rating about 8,000 or more. The really good ones at 85% life left. So that would take like six hours to charge it. And I want to, I like to trickle charge because I want to make sure it's pushing it, this battery to its full capacity. If you charge it too fast, it's not going to put all the juice into it. So at the end of that cycle, it'll stop. It'll say done in the corner, and it'll also show on the display here if you're connected with USB and got the software installed. After it's charged, you're going to go, sorry, you're going to go to DCHG, discharge cycle, and I discharge test at 3 amps. So a good battery with like over 8,000 amp hours is going to take about uh, 2 to 3 hours to do that discharge test. So as you see, you do discharge, and it also does regenerative discharge. So this, these are actually coming from my own 24 volt bank of these batteries. That's where it's getting the juice from. So it's actually going to restore that energy it's pulling from this back into my battery bank, the source supply that feeds into the charger. So anyway, you see since the battery is drained, its voltage is already low. Normally you'd see the battery around you know, in the 26 and quickly get to 25 during the discharge test. And at the end of it, it'll say done, and it'll have you a reading there, but also a thing to watch out for most of the time, these batteries will cut off at the low voltage. And I have it, I, I have it drain all the way, so it does cut off to make sure I get a full capacity reading. And that is the main reason to have a computer attached to it, because the screen cuts off, you're not going to have a reading on the screen of the charger. But if you have it on the laptop, you'll have that reading right there. It'll be at the bottom. And I think that's that's how you test, that's how I test the capacity of these K2 Energy lithium batteries. And this one is quickly going to shut off here because it's already low. It was just, uh, did a dis full discharge. So when it gets down to 22, 21, that, that is close right there. It's not going to get much. But it looks like it might be pulling another 100 milliamp hour out of it, which would explain why the test reading read 100 milliamp hour short. And you want to make sure these wires are thick as possible. You want to make sure you have high quality uh, banana plugs. And like I think this is 12, 12 gauge wire. And you can get some cheap ones like this. You don't want this kind of banana plug. This is flimsy and it'll hold it. It won't even hold tight in the ports here. It'll be loose. It won't have a good connection. You're going to get a bad reading. It's not going to charge and discharge correctly. So as you can see, this is going to it is going to shut off soon and give you like a 100 amp hour reading. But that's basically how you do it. Um, if I wait here, it might cut off for you guys.
Once it gets to 21, it should go down really fast. Yeah, you see it speeding up. Now I can test the voltage at the terminals and show you guys there's a slight difference. So my screen right now, I will let you know. This is 21.52. That's actually like spot, I guess it's pretty close on. It's only 0.02 off. It's usually more off than that. As you see, it's already in the low 21. But I've gotten another 150 milliamp hours out of it. If you see over at this battery I tested, uh, 6330, it must have been used a little bit because it only got 4800, and you can see the voltage. This battery cut off. That's why it's reading only 5 volts instead of its nominal 24. So if I test at these terminals, when this battery's cut off, it's reading, you know, here it's reading 3.4. And as you can see, this screen is now says done. It actually didn't cut off like this one did, and there's the reading on there, and this one is 3.4, let me show you, if you grab a charged battery, what you do is you jump it like that, and now you'll have a, normally you get the voltage back up to a resting voltage. And that one looks pretty high for resting voltage from being cut off. It's interesting, these batteries might have an issue where they cut off prematurely, it looks like. And that sounds right, because this is the only ones I've had returned by a customer. So there might be some rare issue. Usually these batteries are, these batteries are high performance, uh, very solid, very reliable, um, well, in their normal lifespan.